Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you everything that's happening in and around Missoula and in Montana for your Wednesday morning, May 16th. No, it's May 17th. Sorry about that. It's May 17th, Wednesday morning, and uh, I have a lot to talk about today. I got some weather. I got some news. I got the uh, third to the last stop animation of the series, so I have another stop animation video for you guys as well. Um, but let's kick it off with a little bit of weather. Um, if you haven't already looked outside, it's snowing. And it looked like it's gonna be. <laughs> it has that winter storm warning happening in and around Missoula. And according to some of my friends around the uh, int internet, is that there's some uh, areas that have power outages. So you may want to check that out. Along with that, it is currently 32 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 42. Your low is going to be 37. So uh, I guess there always has to be a little taste of winter just before the summer uh, breaks out. It's uh, kind of like that Monty Python and the Holy Grail, where it's like. Winter turns into summer. Summer bypasses winter and spring and goes directly into fall or autumn. If you want to be, uh, if you want to be critical about it. But anyways, um, you have Thursday. Your high is gonna be 58. Your low is gonna be 37. And Friday, we can expect those temperatures to go back to what they have been in the last couple weeks, with that slight chance of spring showers happening this week. But um, one thing's for sure is that MCAT, uh, its carpet is wet, so uh, we got a little bit of flooding in our uh, in our little area, so we're going to definitely have to deal with that in a wee bit, but that's kind of what you guys can expect for the weather in the next couple days. Um, also, this weekend will be our last Saturday drop-in animation weekend, so I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. Um, today, uh, the Missouri Mercantile, uh, on Monday, the Missouri Mercantile, uh, actually, let me start over. <laughs> The Missoula, Mer the Missoula Mercantile had their brick giveaway on Sunday from 1 to 4 p.m. I got mine at 12 um, because the bricks were laid out, and I was like, grab, grab, <laughs> later, nerds. And I just grabbed it, and I was like, um, I would have, oh, crap, I didn't bring the brick out. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go grab that brick right now. Like, I don't, I don't this, this stay with me. Yeah, you just saw that. I just literally walked out on my own show without even cutting to a PSA or whatever. I do what I want. Anyways, here is a brick from the Mercantile. I picked this one because it has holes in it. I like the holes. It's really awesome. And the inter interesting thing, thing about the texture of the, this particular brick, it, it definitely feels like chalk. Like when, pe when I hand this brick to someone, it's just like, huh, this is lighter than I expected. This doesn't feel like a brick at all. So uh, definitely there's some... Um, truth in what some of the uh, developers were saying about that, uh, how hard it was to salvage some of the bricks. And yes, it was indeed hard to salvage the bricks because um, the, almost the day after they did the brick giveaway on Monday, um, they had an issue with uh, the roof began to collapse. But they, uh, but crews said that they were but demolition crews who were working to prevent the collapse early Monday, and thus have reported that the building will still be salvageable and reinforced for future use of the Hotel Marriott that will be built. If you are able to get your brick, uh, you would notice that the texture is very light and it feels kind of like chalk. Blah blah blah. Uh, also, uh, I, I'll have a quote from uh, the. Uh, um, city Council report later in the show as well from uh, P th from a representative from the Mercantile Demolition Crew. I think it's the LLC. I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the show. But um, in other news, um, if you haven't already heard, a high-speed chase left a sheriff deputy dead. 42-year-old Mason Moore was three years on the job when he was last heard from pursuing a white SUV around 3 a.m. Tuesday morning. Um, the pursuit reached speeds over 100 miles per hour. Butte Silver Bull of Officers continued to pursue the vehicle westbound on I-90 through Deer Lodge, so there was some closure on I-90 um, because of this, through Deer Lodge, Powell County, and into Granite County. Uh, a spike strip slowed down the vehicle until the uh, until the until basically the wheels fell off the rims, and they were on the rims until they reached Rock Creek when two sp suspects began firing at deputies. Soon after, deputies returned fire, hitting Marshall Burris in the head. His condition has not been released, and his 61-year-old father is being charged with deliberate homicide. Moore is the uh, 129th Montana law enforcement officer to die in the line of duty since 1878. 
um, just before Montana became a state. Um, in national news, um, from firing the from the firing of FBI uh, James Comey, Trump um, FBI Director James Comey, uh, Trump comes out and says he can say whatever he wants to Russian intelligence from his do what he wants presidency Tr Donald Trump has continued to tweet about this and this is what his tweet says as president I wanted to share with Russia um, at an openly scheduled White House meeting which I have the absolute right to do facts pertaining to terrorism and airline flight safety humanitarian reasons plus I wanted Russia Plus, I want Russia to greatly step up their fight against ISIS and terrorism. The Washington Post broke the news Monday night, and other and others confirmed and added to the reporting that Trump revealed to Russia officials in a meeting in the over office details of an ISIS plot to use laptops on airplanes. The information was classified and reportedly came um, to the uh, from an ally in the Middle East. NPR has not confirmed the details of this word. I got this from NPR.org. And also Trump has continued to have problems with intelligence community. It's never a good thing for a president to be at odds with some of the very people who are tasked with keeping the country safe through uh, some things that are better left to uh, kind of keep secrets for. Um, but that's a whole nother debate that I'm gonna leave out there for you guys as well later on. Um, but that basically concludes everything that's happening in the news. Um, I have a whole bunch of new programs. I'll talk a little bit about them after this little tease on what you guys can expect to watch on MCAT um, tonight and tomorrow. And uh, pretty much throughout the, the weekdays at MCAT, if you log on to MCAT.org, Channel 189. But without further ado, here are all the mags, and I'll tell you how you can watch them anytime um, right after this. People are for developing the world, laboring, and making it fruitful. The people who created those first parks said, no, people are also for awe. People are there to experience wonder. And in fact, one of John Muir's great allies is a biologist and theologian from the University of California, Berkeley, who developed a whole theory, a whole theology of evolution that said the world isn't complete until it can look back on itself in wonder, and that's our job. I was getting out of a 20-year marriage to a guy. <laughs> right? <laughs> I wore my best lesbian shirt tonight, so... So on a trip to Spokane one weekend, I went with a bunch of women to go do Bloomsday. Well, other things bloomed that weekend than <laughs> Bloomsday, and it was at that moment I decided that intercourse wasn't for me. I was really into outer course. <laughs> it's on this slide, but this is basically you know, what I'm doing in office. Um, you know, detailed clinical interview, bare minimum, um, is what I'm doing. Depending on, uh, you know, kind of what's going on with this kiddo and what we need in terms of recommendations, um, I will um, do a little bit of, in a, it's called the VOMS. Is anyone familiar with that? Um, it, it's basically a five minute vestibular ocular motor screening test. Again, the folks out of Pittsburgh, um, I feel like they should be paying me royalties or something for how much I'm name dropping them. Um, but uh, so, so it's just a five minute um, quick exam that I'm doing where, I mean, I'm literally looking at, you know, eye movements, I'm having them move their head around. I'm trying to actually invoke those symptoms to get a good sense of where things may or may not be coming from. I'm looking at near point of convergence, um, you know, looking at, at all that stuff. And instead of spending the money that they have from donors or from the ministry, instead of spending that money on a proprietary license that they have to pay for every year, they can spend that money on training. They can spend that money on the hardware and infrastructure. Um, they can spend that money on actually um, putting it to good use on the software in the country rather than paying someone for a proprietary license. So there is a proliferation of open source software available now. Um, I just laid out a few of the major ones that are really big players in um, the health commodities and health, global health um, kind of landscape. So uh, my project that I'm working on is open LMIS. So like I was talking earlier about LMIS, HMIS, so logistics management information software. So 
I work on OpenLMIS, but there are a number of other um, open source software that do everything from electronic medical records, um, smart registers for client patient registries, um, billing accounting and inventory management. Um, OpenHIE is the interoperability layer. It's a little bit more nebulous, but it's essentially an inter interoperability layer for being able to connect some of the... All right, so that was a little taste of what you guys can see on MCAT at any time. The last one was Global Public Health. We had one uh, from Off the Rack. We've pretty much done Off the Rack as long as it's been around here and around Missoula, and uh, except for that one year, but they still use MCAT equipment to film their stuff, and we did show it later on on our channel. Um, here is where you guys can find more information about um, all those programs and more by logging on to MCAT.org. So MCAT.org is a great uh, resource for anybody who wants to submit a program or submit us to do a program for you guys. Um, it's as simple as going to how do I, you go to event, rest, <laughs> event request recording, Submit a program is this is how you uh, if you have a YouTube channel and you want to uh, basically kind of expand your audience which basically um, includes the Missoula County area um, you can go to submit a program um, but the nice thing about MCAT is that if you give us a program we also put it on our video on demand and the nice thing about our particular video on demand is there's no uh, content um, blockage. So basically there is no like uh, um, YouTube robot that basically takes um, down um, videos because you use copyrighted material. But the nice thing about MCAT is also it's like we do not uh, um, deny you your uh, First Amendment rights. So you can pre basically say whatever you want using whatever you want on our channel at any time. So here is uh, the Missoula County Spelling Bee. So if you're curious on who won the 2017 Missoula County Spelling Spelling Bee. It's uploaded and ready to go. It's about two hours long. We uh, premiered it just last night. Um, but also there's the President Lecture Series, which I just showed you. You have HealthWise, talking about concussion concussion and head injury. You got Global Public Health, which is the last thing I just showed you. You have Off the Rack and the continuation of the Missoula Public Library uh, Public Design Updates. So um, they're constantly kind of changing and kind of figuring out how they want the future of the public library to do, to be. Um, so they're going to have a meeting in June. I believe it's June 11th. Don't quote me on this. You'll have to. You should call the library. I think it's call. It's, you can um, call them at 721 book to find out when the next uh, general meeting is. And it's in the uh, um, large meeting room at the Missoula Public Library as they move forward to create the new library. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. And it's going to be just as wonderful. Um, and um, if you came to our party uh, a couple Fridays ago. It was first Friday of the week. Uh, we had our nice little party where uh, we had a bunch of people from the community come down and kind of say, hey, MCAT, you're okay. And we have a whole bunch of videos um, from that. Um, here's a nice little um, highlight of what you guys missed for our first Friday party. Access Television and the many supporters of uh, community programming, we wouldn't be able to do that. So thanks, MCAT. Happy birthday. Lovely to see you all. And we'll see you on Monday night. So again, thank you, MCAT, for all that you do for this community. And we look forward to another uh, three decades. And congratulations on MCAT for 27 years. And let's keep it going for many, many more. So again, congratulations to MCAT on 27 years of service to the community. We're hoping for many, many, many more. So we're so grateful. Thank you, MCAT. Love you guys. And nobody does a better job of informing, empowering, and engaging people than MCAT. So happy birthday, MCAT. All right, so we're back, and we're talking about some city council stuff. So as I promised before, Ellen McCormick from the M M Missoula Mercantile LLC talks about the recent situation with the Merc that happened on Monday. So here is the, kind of the overview and what they're doing to help uh, prevent the collapse of the pharmacy building, at, which is the one that they are, is which the uh, company um, home base is hopefully um, – trying to uh, keep and restore for when they build the Missoula um, Hotel Marriott that will be at the Missoula Mercantile site. Without further ado, here's Ellen. 
A small mishap occurred today when the east wall of the pharmacy collapsed. During the deconstruction process, the contractors created a physical separation between the pharmacy building and the rest of the, the, uh, the building as a whole. The contractors were working near that east wall and this area of separation between the two buildings this morning to remove the final part of that adjacent building when the wall collapsed. Now this wall was always intended to be removed. It was intended to be removed in order to allow work to be done on the pharmacy and ultimately to better integrate that building and its facades into the rest of the structure when the, the hotel portion of it gets built. As a precaution, when this happened, of course, they didn't expect that the wall would be removed quite in this fashion. It was always intended to be removed, but maybe not quite so quickly. And as a precaution, the contractors alerted the police and the fire and secured the site while they could inspect the building. There were no injuries and there was no property damage, and we're very fortunate for that. While the photos you may have seen look pretty dramatic, the damage to the building extends only approximately three to four feet into the structure itself. The trusses in this location had been cut in the past to accommodate a chimney that extended up through the roof, and the damage extends no further than that portion of the trusses that were uh, that had been cut. <coughs> the remaining the portion, the remaining portion of the building does remain intact. There was no deconstruction work being conducted on the pharmacy building. Plans called for that east wall to be removed soon to allow crews to get the mechanical equipment into the building to add the shoring that's needed to protect the north and the west walls during the future work on the building. In fact, that team was on the ground this morning in anticipation of having that kind of access when that wall collapsed. Beginning this afternoon, shoring was being added to the exterior of the building to provide additional rigidity as a precaution. An inspection of the building reveals that no other parts of the building moved when that wall collapsed. The contractors expect to use mechanical lifts to remove the damaged joists from the building, um, and then uh, after which the team will begin proceed to do the rest of the shoring that they intended to do to protect those north and those west walls. We apologize for the excitement, and we apologize certainly to the citizens of Missoula for the inconvenience that closing down portions of Higgins caused today. We do thank the city, we thank the fire department and the police department for their swift response and their assistance. We promise, as we're doing tonight, to keep in close contact with you. All right, so um, once again, um, the uh, building is fine and they're doing everything they can. They're gonna be uh, basically replacing a lot of the old uh, support beams that kind of kept the building up in the first place because as soon as they started tearing down the uh, the main part of the building, you know, not the pharmacy, but the the other parts of the mercantile, it, it, they were surprised that actually came down fairly easily. Um, so it was like one of the things they definitely were watching out for while they were tearing it down. And um, yeah, me. <laughs> All right, so the folks uh, working on preserving the Merck's pharmacy facade is confident that they can maintain the structure while moving forward on this site. Um, I should avoid ad libbing. Um, Britt um, Arnenson of uh, Riverfront Neighborhood talks about some of the changes in the area near Willard High School. So this is a neighborhood's report from, um, the, um, from Riverfront Neighborhoods, and um, here it is. We have some exciting developments in our neighborhood. There's a new school being built in the Willard School. We talked about that and were invited to join the Rose Park neighborhood in participating in some discussions with that. We organized a neighborhood cleanup day for, I believe, Saturday, June 10th. Anyone's welcome to participate. Um, we're excited that phase three of the mural on the Branch Line Trail, when you bike down the trail, you see there's two phases of a mural. Phase three is going to be happening very soon. Um, and then we were appreciative of some city staff that came and talked to us. Um, the forester, Chris Boza, answered questions, and that was really great. And then Ben Weiss um, and, and Gwen came by to talk about um, the 5th and 6th Street study, and um, Ben is just really great. Everybody from our neighborhood wanted to um, call him out for doing a great job because he got cussed at by a member of the public at our meeting and handled it with a lot of class. So, in fact, I, I didn't witness it, and I witnessed nothing, but um, everybody said that he handled it with a lot of class. And then we did have an action item. We passed a motion that we wanted to let you guys know that we want you to vote yes for a $40,000 budget item for a study of traffic safety for the Higgins Street area between um, Broadway and Brooks, because the, uh, the state is going to do a major rehab of the bridge 
and it's the perfect time to talk about that whole corridor um, so we can take advantage of that project. All right, so uh, once again, that was um, Britt Arnenson, um, and she was talking about some of the Riverfront neighborhood and how that she wants to move forward because um, the Higgins Bridge project is slated for 2020, and it might even be slated for earlier, so that's kind of like what they're working on right now. So up next, uh, they had a public hearing on changes in the Historic Preservation Commission, which moves to downsize and requires certain amounts of expertise on the board. Um, on February 22nd, um, staff presented a draft copy of proposed changes to the Land Use and Planning Committee who requested staff proceed with agencies in interested party outreach and present the amendments to Planning Board. Staff uh, attended the March Historic Preservation Committee meeting to acquire comments from them and received comments from the Planning Board at the public hearing on April 4th. Uh, of course, alternatives were explored. Several uh, issues have elevated um, the need to modify ordinance directing members to for the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, this includes reducing membership and eliminating the geographical region requirements while um, keeping elements of expertise required to be part of the certified local government. Uh, the motion passed, um, and I just want to note that they um, that they are there is one vacancy for an uh, for an alternate for an alternate. Uh, there are seven board members with two alternates. Um, they usually have um, nine trustees at the Historic Preservation Commission, um, but they only need seven. To ha they need those seven people to have a quorum. Um, um, I, I don't think it's seven to have a quorum. Don't quote me on that. So uh, just think about that. And if you want to find out more about other vacancies on the board, you can go to um, ci.missoula.mt.us. There are also vacancies on the. Um, a cemetery board and the desi design review board. So if you're interested in getting involved with local government, this is a nice little shoo-in to uh, get involved and um, basically uh, have a say in how your community develops. All right, so that basically concludes everything that you need to know about what's happening in the city. It was a 37-minute um, city council meeting. They have a whole bunch of committee meetings slated for today, maybe. And you can find out all those by logging on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But without further ado, we have a couple new art clips I wanted to show you guys. And this one's from the Missoula Art Museum. It is Nexus, the Leela and uh, Rudy audio family collection at the Missoula Art Museum. And it's going to end June 24th. So you guys have until the end, towards the end of June to check out this art installation. Hey guys, here is what's happening in and around Missoula um, for events. So let's talk about uh, some open registration for summer camps. The Zootown Arts Community Center is having a um, open registration for a bunch of the summer camps they're holding. Uh, the, sum the summer season is just months away. School's almost out. Um, the uh, the high school kids have about 10 more days of school left um, for uh, the seniors here and around Missoula County Public Schools. So uh, if you have um, any camp, of course, you know, like high school kids, once they're done with high school, they're not going to go to they're not going to go to summer camps. But um, some of the younger kids who are not um, old enough to you know work or do anything like that, you could send them to summer camps to keep them busy. And they have all sorts of stuff. Um, Zootown Arts Community Center will be doing a vaudeville theater, glitter mania, expressive book building, slapstick comedy, puppet theater, happy little oil paintings, music tech, radio DJ, 
Um, they have a rock camp for girls, and they also have rock camp for boys, and then they have a little mixed little concert that they do at the Top Hat Lounge every year as well. So I just want to give a little plug to that because I think it's really awesome. And one of my kids for my uh, stop animation, who also comes to MCAT um, a little too often, also does these camps as well. Um, Montana Ranching Experience. So uh, this is the Rocky Mountain School of Photography. Um, it's very simple. It's uh, where the school of photography, it's a multi-day experience. The folks from the um, Rocky Mountain School of Photography take their cameras and they go to a ranch and they take some nice pictures. Probably in black and white, but uh, here's the description. If the mountains and rivers could talk, would you listen? If the big sky could show you even a fraction of what it has seen, would you look? Witnessing the mountains, rivers, lakes, and oh-so-dreamy light that paints the hills and defines the skies in an experience that won't soon fade from your memory. The workshop is a very, um, it's, it's where you smell, hear, and feel. The true Montana experience is all about uh, with uh, photojournalist Keith Graham and um, Rocky Mountain School photography founder Neil um, Chaput de, uh, wow, that's a long name, <laughs> Centaurig, um, at the helm. Um, you roll up your sleeves and get a solid week of getting down and dirty with your camera. Between classroom um, lecture sessions and group critique opportunities, you spend time steeped in Montana culture as you travel between uh, a couple of working Montana ranches to photograph calving, branding, and the day to life of a working rancher. So that happens. You can find more information by going to the Rocky Mountain S uh, School of Photography website. Um, it's easy to find. You can't miss it. Um, Android tablet and smartphone. So if you don't know how to use an Android tablet or smartphone, um, it's kind of like uh, the PCs of phones. So you can customize it in it many different ways uh, that most people don't really know how to do. But Missoula Public Library is hosting an educational event from 1230 to 1.30 p.m. Um, if you want to do an Android-based tablet or smartphone, the class will offer instructions on the feature of settings and apps that are common to Androids. Participants must bring their own tablets or smartphones to the class. Registration required by calling 721-BOOK, which is 2665. Um, kids bounce time and play time at the Missoula Indoor Sports Arena. Um, they provide an open play entire family for the inflated park for kids 2 to 12 Open play hours are from 4 p.m. to 6.30 p.m., and it's Monday through Thursday. Um, farmer field day, value-added farm products, lower crossing farm. Actually, I'm not going to say this because it seems like it's a big commercial. Skip. Um, art guide training, Missoula Art Museum is doing it. Art guides are invited to meet with artist Maggie Hit um, Hiltner um, during the uh, installation of her uh, Fantastic textile exhibit, MAM's Art Guide program it trains uh, dedicated individuals to lead tours of the exhibit, uh, exhibitions for all ages, exploring the visual thinking strategies approach developed by MO. MA's Philip um, Yanawine. Um, um, art guides reach the audience by helping them um, learn to look at, appreciate, and respond to contemporary art. And this is happening at the Missoula Art Museum, and you can get in contact with them at 728-0447 to learn more about becoming an art guide. So if you guys are maybe retired, maybe you've always loved the art, and you always just love talking about art and meeting people and just talking with people, it's a great experience for some people to get out there and become an art guide. Be like, look at this painting. Me, I'd, I'd be just really awful. I'd just kind of like laugh at during the time. It's like, you know, this kind of, this painting reminds me of Star Wars. Let's talk about Star Wars for the next hour. And moving on, uh, community listening session at the Frenchtown Fire Hall. This is uh, um, one of many community ses listening, ses les uh, listening sessions. Missoula Con Conservation District invites all Missoula County residents to share their natural resource concerns and priorities at one of the upcoming community listening sessions. Um, it's going to be at the Frenchtown Firehouse tonight at 6 p.m. Thursday, um, it's also it's going to be at Swan Valley Community Center in Condon, um, May 22nd, which is a Monday. Um, Potomac Greeno Community Center, which is going to be Wednesday, May 24th, and then Missoula Public Library Tuesday, June 27th. That's quite a giant skip for between the two. Um, feedback received at all sessions through um, the online survey. Um, you can see the link um, by going on to MissoulaEvents.net. Will be used to help from the long range plan. The plan is set for district's goals and priorities including grant programs and workshops for the next five years. Um, E-cigs and Missoula Kids, dangers you need to know. All right, so this is the thing about uh, e-cigarettes is it's, you know, um, basically vaping is kind of like where you get the most amount of nicotine, um, the most 
boom for your buck. So you can have the least amount of nicotine, but you use probably about more of it. So any people who, who vape can tell you is that, oh, it's not that big of a deal, whatever. But the people who do vape and ingest that kind of stuff are just as susceptible to um, cancerous materials as anybody else who would just smoke a regular cigarette that's made with rat poison. Um, E-cigarettes are now the most commonly used tobacco products among, among Montana's youth because you know, why not? It's like bubblegum flavored, cherry flavored, raspberry flavored. It's ridiculous. Like one of the kids that come in here say that oh, one of their uh, um, one of their uh, peers at their high school basically smells like raspberries because they vape all the time. Uh, the most recent Montana Youth uh, Risk Behavior Survey shows that more than 50% of Montana high school students have tried three e-cigarettes and 30% um, are using them regularly. Most e-cigarettes contain nicotine, which is highly addictive and unsafe for youth in any form because it can harm developing brains. Additionally, e-cigarettes batteries can explode or cause fire. Okay, that's that's definitely one of those things that we're, that gets worked on. But at the same time, it's like. Um, I don't want to mention that at the same time because it's kind of like a misconception. But this is also kind of like more about the health hazards and issues that you need to know about e-cigarettes and the Missoula kids. And it's going to be at 7 p.m. at the Sentinel High School cafeteria. Mm, I don't want to get too political about it, but I don't know about the exploding batteries things because it's kind of like the exploding hoverboards. Anyways, that kind of concludes everything that you need to know about uh, the highlighted events for your Wednesday. Here are some of your night events that are happening. Um, you got Sharon in the Groove, the celebrating the music of Fish, PH Fish, at the Top Out Lounge for their happy hour specials. And you get a little punch card to, so you can, go, uh, and if you fill out the punch card, you get to go to one of the Top Hat shows uh, for free. Um, Imagination Jam Society is doing a public jam at the Imagination Brewing Company. Um, they invite musicians to come down, drink some beer, and play some music. Um, spend some money and all that stuff. Britchie is going to be at the uh, Great Burn Brewing Company. It's going to be bluegrass folk music, jazz night at the Top Out Lounge, country dance lessons with instructor Kathy Clark, and then a whole bunch of karaoke happening at the Eagles Lodge, Badlander, and the Sunrise Saloon. So you can check all that out and more. Uh, I do have another art clip for you guys. I want to show you that one because it's another brand new art clip and it ends um, the end of May. So this has happened at the Clay Studio, and usually by the time we get an art clip from Rick of the Clay Studio, it ends. So I want to show this Clay Studio art clip pretty much every single episode for the next couple weeks until May 25th. So without further ado, here is a new art clip that I may only show you a couple of times. So um, better get better get there and check it out. And when I come back, I'll have the rest of your events, and I also have the uh, third to the last stop animation video of the week. <laughs> wow, that was crazy. It was it was like watching a claymation and it, and like some of them just kind of like escalated. It was like, let's build a house. Oops, never mind. But yeah, uh, moving on here, some of the um, events for you guys that are happening for tomorrow. So Kinetic Sand, I love Kinetic Sand. Why wouldn't you? We still have Kinetic Sand here at MCAT that's lasted for this long. Our Play-Doh maybe lasts a week, but Kinetic Sand has lasted forever. I'm not selling for Kinetic Sand. Actually, maybe I am. Oh, anyways, they have Connect Sand at the Family's First Children's Museum starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. So you can check that out, make some creations, do some fun. 
The um, Family's First Children Museum is um, basically the executive director of it now is Nick Roberts, who is former director of the flagship program, which, you know, knowing that it's in his hands, um, I'm very confident that's going to do very well. So congratulations, Nick. Um, Jumbo Art Jamboree is going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center. Um, this is going to be $95, $85 for members, and this is going to be happening from Thursday from um, 2.15 to um, 5.30 p.m. Um, and also April, and it's going to be from April 27th to June 1st. Students will build, paint, uh, collage, and draw masterpieces of life-size proportions. They'll work together with building ecosystems, imaginary characters, and their necess um, necessary uh, accoutrements. Uh, oh, accoutrements. Oh, damn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that will be displayed at the end of the year. WAAP ex exhibition in the Zach Gallery. Um, all right, moving on. Um, ignore, I said damn. <sighs> okay, a ropes course open climb is going to be at the McCormick Park at 5 p.m. Uh, practice skills on your high slack line and learn how to ascend a rope or belay or just have some fun climbing to new heights. And this is from 5 to 8 p.m. every Thursday through the summer. It's $5 suggested donations, but they will not turn people away if you cannot afford it. Um, Adventure Paws, Wagon Indoor Dog Park, one of my favorite places that just kind of opened up or just kind of started advertising on MissoulaEvents.net. Do you have a puppy who needs to learn how to socialize with other dogs and people? If so, come join the uh, play date and help your dog learn social graces in canine and uh, with canine and humans dog park free to play after the hunt wagon nation i don't even know idea what the j uh dog park free play time after the hunt i have no idea what that means wagon national members it's a free event non-members ten dollars for the entire furry family humans are free uh first time to wagon please register your preps at the website at waggn.org like wagon um, but yeah, anyways, Essential Cinema, um, the Roxy Theater is be uh, hosting Mulholland Drive. Oh, so blonde Betty Elms, Naomi Watts, has only just arrived in Hollywood to become a movie star. I wonder how that works out. Um, <laughs> when she meets an um, ignatic, um, a, 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 a mysterious brunette with amnesia, Laura Her Herring. Meanwhile, as the two set off to solve the second woman's identity, filmmaker Adam Kesher runs, um, who's, bus who's played by Justin Thoreau, runs into ominous trouble with the casting his latest project. David Lynch uh, seductive and scary vision of Los Angeles Dreams Factory is one of the true masterpieces of the new millennium, a tale of love, jealousy, and revenge like no other. Um, and speaking of hysteria, hysteria is the Bear Bait's um, Bear Bait Dance last performance of their uh, season because they um, they um, they run during the school year and they have residency. That's the word I'm looking for at the University of Montana. I was kind of working my way around it. Um, for this final show of the Bear Bay Dance Session, the talented company of members bring a new level of uh, theatrical uh, phys physicality and nuanced dance performance to the stage under the collaborative efforts of co-directors Kelly Borma and Joy French. The company delves deeply into exploring the cultural uh, psychosis, history, and misinformation of hysteria, perhaps even inspiring their own mass dance history among western montana audience and they're going to be doing this um may 18th 19th at 8 p.m so you can check that out at the union hall um there's the only two performances that are left so it's going to happen thursday and friday and you only have two chances to go check it out at union hall and a warning it's a uh, contemporary dance but you know i don't know how you guys feel about that um anyways moving on uh honeycomb is going to be at monks it's going to be a dj um, here are some of your night events as well. Uh, the, you have an open mic at the Broadway. You have rocking karaoke, rocking rock, rock karaoke, rock, rocking karaoke. Wow, I at the Dark Horse Lounge. Go to the Dark Horse if you want to do some karaoke. It's right next to the Sunrise. It's basically the same building. Um, they probably save a lot of money on rent or whatever. Um, the two tracks is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge, and it's going to be folk music. So that's some of your Thursday night events that are happening. Um, just so you guys know, the uh, Out to Lunch and Downtown Tonight events won't start until after Memorial Day. Saturday is a great uh, opportunity for anybody to uh, 
come on down to the farmer's market, Clark River, River Market. Luann Crowley was on Missoula Live um, Monday where she kind of explained the uh, Missoula's farmer's market. And there's uh, other markets uh, in the downtown Missoula area. Um, later on in the summer, there'll be a Sunday market, usually in the Karis Park uh, parking lot near uh, the carousel. Um, also, um, they'll do Tuesday night markets over at the Red X's. So if you guys uh, can't do Saturday mornings because you are – like working or working it um, for your Saturday mornings, you guys can do Tuesday night markets, which happens every Tuesday night from about 5.30 to about 8. And you guys can check out some of the produce that some people have and get on the um, cutting room floor, I guess, of um, the farmer's market, maybe before or maybe after, because who knows um, when some of the uh, products that they, uh, the, the produce that they uh sell at these at the farmers market may not be available on one day over the other so it's just something you definitely have to be looking for um that's basically includes everything that you need about about events that are happening in and around missoula i do want to talk about a couple of things before i get into my f um, my third to last i know I, I my next week i'll have the part one of the the final last episodes of the stop motion video of the week where uh lego characters are just like uh, i just use my imagination and i'm kind of burnt out of it so i uh completed uh this one doing the voices and the audio just last night um the other one uh is already done um filming i just have to add some audio and some voices and it will be good to go for your very last of your stop motion stuff um our saturday drop-ins are ending this saturday so um i usually uh make these videos to kind of help encourage kids to um, um, express their creative juices. Um, so there is a, um, uh, uh, I guess there's a, um, a plan behind all these videos. But without further ado, here's the stop motion video of the week. Um, I'll have a little taste of some of the um, um, videos that you guys can expect for your Saturday finale. Um, all the flagship videos are done. All the basically school, after school programs, all the kids programs that MCAT does will be wrapping up this Saturday, May 20th. And without further ado, here is the stop motion video of the week called The Plan. Man, you better listen up. Just because yo daddy thinks he's all that doesn't mean you're all that. You hear me? You hear me, son? If you're gonna help on this venture, I need to know if I can trust you. Uh, yeah, dude, you can totally trust me. All right, now you listen here, son. None of that dude talk around me anymore. We're gonna take this as seriously as possible. Huh? Uh, hi there. I'm Connor. Uh, nice to- <laughs> Wait, you got to be uh, kidding me. What do you do? Uh, uh wait, no, yeah. wait, uh. Now you listen here, punk. Officer Stone, relax, relax. He's with me. He's with me. Man, I don't care who you think he's with. He's not with us. I don't know if I can trust anyone. Seriously, we're like all on our own in this one. Ugh, I hate this table. No, you don't worry about him. I trust you. Uh, I guess that's all that really matters. What? I, oh, I can't believe this. Whoa, uh, what seems to be the problem? Is it me? No, it's just that little punk over there. <laughs> Yo, dude, come over here. Oh, come over there. <laughs> I'm kind of this. Man, you gotta be crazy. Don't throw him on the you ground like that. You don't know him like I do. We can't trust him. <laughs> trust? What about your friend Connor there? He's a comedian who performs inside the enemy compound where your friend is being held. He could get us in and through. <laughs> it's no joke. <laughs> Man, I don't know about this. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him perform. He's really funny. And he's tough as nails. I just want to say all joking aside, I'm with you guys no matter what. I, I want to put a stop to this. <laughs> Yeehaw! That's what I like to hear. <laughs> the name is Mitch. I'm in charge of plans and operations. What do you got planned, Mitch? You gotta understand, it's the element of surprise. <laughs> <clears throat> if we do this right, we'll be able to rescue the only one fighting for this city. You can count on me, sir. And with Connor, we'll be one step ahead of the pirates. Yo! <laughs> That's what I like to hear. And with all of us together, we can pull this off. I'm sorry, sir. She followed me. All right, everybody. Stand down. You stand back right now. You hear me? <sighs> it's all right, Reggie. You can put it down. Now, everyone, put your hands up. I'm sorry you have to do this. But there's no way you can stop all of us. You better stop right there. Right now. A plan is being put into place to save this vigilante. Yes, vigilantum is illegal in this city, but now is your chance to choose a side. <laughs> hey, cop lady. I'm a good guy. <sighs> Don't listen to him. He's a moron. You can stop our bodies, but you can't stop our cause. Are you a cop or a pirate? No, wait! Uh -huh. 
Ugh, you are unbelievable. You are not like your father at all. Why would I ever be like him? Huh. Looks like we got a lot of work to do, fellas. Alright, so that concludes your stop motion video of the week. Thanks to you guys for joining me. Um, I'll have a lot more stuff happening this Friday. Dubbin stuff is back. I'll talk some pre-critic. And I think there is a special video I'm going to be showing you guys this Friday as well. But stay tuned. We'll find out more on this Friday, um, the May 19th. I think it's May 19th because, yes, it's the 17th. So two days from now will be Friday, May 19th. And I'll talk a little bit more about what you guys can expect for the last um, stop uh, Saturday drop-in at MCAT, which happens from 1 to 5 p.m. It's going to be a little party. We're going to watch the videos, we'll play some games, play some VR, and just have a good old time. So, guys, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about this on Friday. I'm, I'm tired of talking. Um, get, uh, if you haven't gotten your brick, uh, last time I checked, there are still, ugh, there's still lots of bricks from the Missoula Mercantile. So, this brick, I have no idea how old it is, but I'm pretty sure it could be um, well older than I am, that's for sure. But anyways, um... Um, usually the mercantile was about 100 plus years old. They say 140 years old, but they also built onto the building. So there's many different parts of the building that might not be as old as it claims to be. So um, I'm just going to go with it by saying that uh, my brick is over 140 years old. It feels like it could be, but you never know. So uh, thanks for joining me and for Wake Up Missoula. I'm Scott Ramp. And once again, to find out more information about my morning show and to watch um, other clips and stuff, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it all out twice. Subscribe to me on YouTube, f uh, like me on Facebook, and follow me on Twitter. It's like three different words for doing basically the same thing with three different um, um, social networking websites. Um, you can also go to MCAT.org to sign up for our summer camps. Um, just because our Saturday drop-ins and after-school programs are done doesn't mean we don't have all those kids' programs this summer. We have five uh, summer camps. You can sign your kid up. We uh, have the age from 9 to 13 for our general summer camps. Our zombie workshop, uh, zombie camp, um, is full, pretty much full. It's like completely like a couple kids uh, just recently signed up. I got a call from a couple parents. I don't know if they've signed them up yet. So I'm just going to say that our zombie camp is definitely seeming like it's full, but you can always contact us at 542-6228 to kind of help clarify and seeing if there is some available spots. And there, sometimes if you know that I've worked with some of your kids in some of the after school programs, I might give them a little a bump into the uh, zombie camp as well. So um, just get a hold of us. 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us, mcat at mcat.org. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ranth for the last time. Mm -hmm.